Grace, mercy, and God's peace to us from our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is August 30th. Hard to believe it's the end of, almost the end of summer. And our text for today is from Romans 12, verses 9 to 21. And the title is Genuine Love. Writing to Christians 2,000 years ago, St. Paul wrote in Romans 12, Let love be genuine. A pastor in Virginia once asked four eight-year-old children what love meant. And here are their four different answers. Number one, love is when mommy gives daddy the best piece of chicken. Number two, during my piano recital, I was on stage and scared. I looked at all the people watching me and saw my daddy waving and smiling. He was the only one doing that. I wasn't scared anymore. Number three. Love is when mommy sees daddy smelly and sweaty and still says he's the, he is handsomer than Robert Redford. And the last one. This is the one I like the best. Love is when your puppy licks your face, even after you left him home all day. Well, these aren't exactly biblical definitions, but they are genuine and sincere. Genuine love, scripture tells us, is selfless and good. It has no ulterior motives, according to 1 Corinthians 13. It isn't something you can trade for another person's affections or attention. Genuine, genuine love is more concerned with the other person than with self. Now, all of us have experienced fake love, fake smiles, fake sincerity, and it's kind of ugly. Fake love is like eating fiber one cereal. I know because I eat it almost every day. It tastes artificial, it tastes like cardboard. But we've also experienced genuine love in our lives, and it's beautiful and precious. Genuine love is like eating cheesecake, sweet, smooth, delicious, and leaves you wanting more. Genuine love isn't about tempor temporary infatuation or emotional highs. 
Genuine lo love is about actions. Paul describes some of these actions. He writes in Romans 12, Let love be genuine, abhor or hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor, do not be slothful in zeal, be fervent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer, Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. It's interesting to me how Paul connects genuine love with our relationship with God and then with people. Right now we're in the middle of an extremely divisive presidential election campaign. There seems to be so much animosity, disrespect, anger, and hatred between Americans on both sides. There certainly is no regard for the Eighth Commandment in speaking well of one another. Now, I don't watch the news much anymore. It's too disturbing. It's slanted, regardless of which side you listen to. And on the news last night, I accidentally caught a clip at the end of the Republican National Convention of a crowd surrounding a senator and his wife leaving the convention. The crowd was yelling, shoving, and just being outright obnoxious. A policeman was simply trying to keep the senator safe and was either punched or pushed in the face. I tried to put myself in place of that senator or policeman. How could I possibly show genuine love to those people pushing, yelling, cursing? I couldn't do it on my own. I couldn't get past my natural human reaction of anger the kind of love it would take for me to love someone abusing me like that would be superhuman. Something I just don't have in my natural self. In spite of that, Paul says that genuine love in Christ is to be given to those who abuse and hate us. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Of course, he got this from Sermon on the Mount, Jesus' words. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Boy, Facebook participants could take some hints from that, couldn't they? Yesterday I read about King Solomon's later life. The Bible makes this comment several times about him. Quote, he did not give his heart wholly to God, as his father David had done, unquote. Oh, he still believed in God. He just wasn't totally committed to God. He built idols for his pagan wives instead of bringing them to faith in the true God. In other words, he dabbled in things that God hated, which is the opposite of what Paul says. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. How much evil do we dabble in? How much evil do we ignore in our own life? How much evil do we wink at in those around us? And how much does that dabbling prevent us from genuinely loving God and others? Genuine love isn't so much about being Minnesota nice or thoughtful or kind or polite. Genuine love is about being Jesus to other people. In our family, in our congregation, at our job, or in school, what kind of love do people see in us? Do they see genuine love or human, selfish, fake love? These passages in Romans would be good for us to read every morning before we start our day. They remind us of who we are in Jesus. It reminds us that our preferences are far less important than our relationships with others. A few days ago, I read Augustine of Hippo's description of his mother, of his mother Monica. Sorry, that's my bird clock telling me it's one o'clock. I'll start over on that. 
A few days ago, I read Augustine of Hippo's description of his mother, Monica. She must have been quite a lady. Her husband, Augustine's father, reminds me of the unshaved, beer-drinking, pot-belly guy sitting in front of the television watching football games all day. He wasn't a Christian and treated his wife badly. And yet she stuck with him in spite of his infidelities and boorish behavior. Before he died, he was baptized and he became a Christian. Monica's Christian lifestyle influenced her husband and her wild playboy son, who we now call Saint Augustine, in a blessed and positive way. Monica must have been the embodiment of piety, goodness, and patience. She didn't learn that kind of behavior from the pagan culture she lived in. She learned it from the source of genuine love, Jesus. Repay no one for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you, doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but, be, but overcome evil with good. Let your love be genuine. Amen. Now may the peace of God that goes beyond our understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.